Looking for strategies to help you protect your portfolio in these uncertain times? Visit robblack.com. Robblack.com. Powered by EP Wealth. Happy January 23rd. Years already marching on. We're all getting older. Goal of the show is to get you to retirement. Play along if you would. Um, what do we need to know today? I tend to like to look a little bit at yesterday, a little bit of today. I tend to want to remind you, uh, you want somewhere between 10 to 20 times your salary before you retire. Maybe more, <clears throat> depending on where you think inflation is going to go. Most of us assume inflation is going to be 2 to 4% per year, each year, until we die. And some years it's to be worse, some years it's to be a little less. Uh, it's those worst years that are the, the killers in your expectations. Let's talk about yesterday briefly, as I want to do. NASDAQ, S&P, and the Dow all were higher. 10-year Treasury sits at 4.09%, starting the year roughly at 5 and dropping down to the low 4s, into the high 3s, back into the low 4s. We seem to be able to work with that. What, uh, let's talk, you know, what happened yesterday, the Dow Jones Industrial Average and the S&P 500, they are breaking records. Both hit new all-time highs yesterday after doing the same on Friday. That's interesting. Um, in the short term, I like to see it. Not as much as in the long term. It's like I said, I'm, you know, I would, if I was retired and all my money would, I want to be at all time high, but I don't in one week or two weeks when my next 401k uh, funding hits goes from my company to my mutual fund company, Fidelity that manages it. I wouldn't mind have some cheaper prices. I can get more assets at a discount from their all time highs. But again, that's just me. Um, what do we have to hit as far as big stories? New Hampshire votes today. It's the 41st most populous state. I guess I'll tune in a little bit tonight on the news channels. See what we learn. A lot of questions about both President Biden and President Donald Trump and their, <clears throat> their health as they are aged. And Nikki Haley daughter of two Indian immigrants. I think that's a pretty cool story in of itself, female running for president, but also daughter of two recent immigrants. Um, I think that's the American dream. But don't let me get in the way of your politics, right? The world's first malaria vaccination program rolls out in Africa. You're like, really? Yep. Uh, it has the name Mosquito in it, which I find interesting. Moskrix. It's got Mo in it. Developed by GlaxoSmithKline, endorsed by the World Health Organization. It's now being given for free to children aged six months or younger. Where malaria is responsible for 12% of childhood deaths in 2021. Mosquito-borne diseases cause more than 600,000 deaths each year. 95% of them occur in Africa. Talking about... Oftentimes I say I won the lottery because I was born on a coast in the United States to parents who expected me to go to college. There's a lot of question now on does college financially make sense for the careers that are lighting up out of college versus the demand of for labor outside of a college degree um, is underserved and the wages are going higher faster. Um, it would be tough for me, and I'm not in this situation yet, but it would be tough for me to send my kid to college to get a four-year or five-year degree in something where he might make $60,000 a year, max earnings, like, like a teacher, versus telling him, hey, why don't you be, go, go become a welder and make $120,000 a year? Um, like I said, that would be tough. Okay, let's talk about today, shall we? Um, what we have today as far as top stories is it's earnings season. We're coming off two days of record highs, Friday and Monday. 
where do we go from here? Stocks are treading water, in my opinion, as we're focusing on the economy and the health of corporate America. Today, there's a little bit of disappointment out of 3M and General Electric lowering 2024 expectations. Bitcoin broke beneath 39,000 after hitting 47,000 when the ETFs uh, got approval to sell Bitcoin ETFs last week. So it's down 20% in a week. That's ouch. Again, I don't own any Bitcoin. Uh, if you wanted to, I think the ETFs are the right way to do it with no more than 5% of your wealth. And maybe even start with 1% and give it a year and see how you feel about it and add another percent. That one's up to you. Interesting, Crocs and Claire's have made comebacks. Both of them have, were cultural icons in the early 2000s, and they became culturally irrelevant in 2010s. Uh, but Claire's has stores locations now in Paris, very high end, in Walmart, very low end, and in the metaverse on Roblox, which I go, huh, that one, that one kind of throws me for uh, how do you describe that? That's where kids are. That's where they see the advertising. That's where they see the new uh, pants and shirts they want to wear. Crocs has a high number of uh, corporate and celebrity partnerships under its belt at this point in time. Let's talk a little bit about powder and profits, the snow business. Snow business. There's no business like snow business. The snow business has record prices, record skiers, and record revenues. I was looking at single-day lift tickets, and they are crazy. At Vail, they cost $299. It's the highest amount ever charged for the iconic resort. The price is $100 higher than a single-day ticket six years ago. Steamboat Springs, Beaver Creek, Park City, Mountain all have $299 tickets. In Northern California, you get Heavenly North Star and Palisades. They're around $250 on the three-day weekends for one day of skiing. It's going to cost you $275. American Ski Resorts saw 65.4 million skier snowboarders last year. Highest number ever. There are fewer ski resorts today than there were 40 years ago and almost no new opportunities to ever build a new one. So that's pretty interesting, right? It's kind of a monopoly between Vail Resorts and Altera Mountain Company. They own dozens of resorts. They've uh, Frankenstein together a plan called Season Passes. That sell for $909 if you buy them in the spring. Vail Resort sold 59,000 of those passes in 2012, 650,000 in 2016. They sold 1.2 million in 2019 and 2.4 million this year for over $900 million in sales. Big story that will hit Netflix is going to stream sports. We'll talk about what sports they will be streaming. Uh, coming up on the show, you can find me online at robblackshow.com. That's robblackshow.com. Big event coming up. My next event is coming up. Um, seven Steps for Retirement Readiness. Stanford Park Hotel in Menlo Park. It's really close to Palo Alto. Um, it's Thursday, February 15th, 630 to 8.30. It's a Thursday event. First event with CFP Chad Burton this year. I'll get there early and talk financial planning with you Seven Steps for Retirement Readiness. It's a new, new program by Chad. You can find out more at robblackshow.com. Sign up today at robblackshow.com. Don't want to work forever? Check out the Retirement Planning Guide on robblack.com. That's robblack.com, powered by EP Wealth. Oh, the man is running wild, brother. I think we all define ourselves by the WWE wrestler of our time. And sadly, mine is Hulk Hogan. Because I say sadly because he looks old and he looks tired at this point in time of his life. Negativity and Hulkamania, two things that don't go together. Um, I remember this stuff way too clearly. I never really followed WWE, never bought into it. Um, I had a high school girlfriend whose little brother loved it. So I pretended to like it and went to one event, and it was pretty crazy. Um, lots of drama. I think the wrestling's fake. But everybody out there is wrestling like a robot. Is there anything we can learn from investing from this? Probably not, right? I fear no man, no beast, or evil, brother. 
what are you afraid of? I don't have a lot of fear when it comes to the stock market. I know that's a stretch, right? That is a stretch getting that in to fit boldly into an investment thought. But Netflix is going to stream WWE's Raw. And it used to be called WWF, the World Wrestling Federation, but they had to change the name because someone already had the name, the World Wildlife Foundation. So Netflix is going to air WWE's flagship program, Raw, starting next year in Netflix's first major foray into live sports. Wait, wait, what did I... Is Netflix getting into wrestling? That's what I just said, brother. Raw is the top program on USA, draws 17.5 million unique viewers per year. 10-year deal structured at $5 billion after five years. Netflix has the option to quit or extend it for another decade. Netflix is going to stream Raw globally as well. Mostly in the Americas, Canada, Latin America. Netflix is also going to get SmackDown, NXT, as well as WrestleMania, SummerSlam, and Royal Rumble. WrestleMania and Royal Rumble and SummerSlam all have kind of a Taylor Swift thing going on where they go to big stadiums and they bring a lot of fans from around the world. Netflix has dabbled with Formula One, professional golf, tennis, and football with documentaries. The football one was particularly good. Last year it featured uh, Patrick Mahomes, Kirk Cousins, and one other quarterback, but I'm forgetting his name, who struggled. Uh, the guy from the Pacific Northwest. Anyway, I'm going to drop it. Um, so what's interesting is Netflix could develop movies or series around the WWE characters. It's pretty wild to think about. Um, Netflix stock reports numbers this week, and there'll probably be some talk about this for sure. Um, as far as what their stock is doing today, and I can't recommend the stock of the other company because I just don't know anything about it. But Netflix stock is up fractions. It's up 30 cents today, sitting at $486. They're going to spend more on programming than companies like Disney. And um, I would pay attention to that statement once, twice, three times, whatever it makes sense to you to understand what I'm trying to say with that. The other company that owns WWE is called TKO. Their stock is up 16% today on the news. Um, I wonder what they're going to do for an encore. Once you get streaming rights in North America, you sure you got some streaming rights overseas. They got pricing that they could do on the Royal Rumbles and WrestleManias. But for me, uh, the play might be over for a while. Now, again, I don't know. I, I don't follow the company. Um, but will they make relationships with other ways to distribute their content? Will they come up with a new, instead of WWE, maybe it'll be Kung Fu K. I don't know. The KFK. And that'll be the Kung Fu Club or something like that with a K. Because we all know club is spelled with a K. Um, but that's a pretty big story today. And that's, I, I don't want to say shocking. But uh, there you got it. United CEO cast doubt on the 737 MAX 10 order after Boeing's recent problems. United Airlines forecast first quarter loss due to the 737 MAX 9 groundings. Uh, the new planes have better technology that takes the planes farther and further on less fuel. So, But United is considering fleet plans without the Boeing 737 MAX 10. CEO Scott Kirby, who, for the record, he sounds like a man's man. I was listening to him being interviewed and it kind of sounds like that John Wayne character. Well, you yeah, know, we got to make sure that this is the straw that broke the camel's back. Kirby said the Max 9 grounding after the door plug blew off on an Alaska Airlines flight is the straw that broke the camel's back. Is he negotiating in public to get a better deal from Boeing? I don't know. In August 2018, um, he outlined the cabin plans for the some 100 MAX 10s the company had ordered, saying this time the carrier expected to fly them in 2020. The planes would help replace older jets. Again, a great way to save money, efficiencies, get the right planes um, bought, leased in the air, update your fleet with more efficiencies. 
Boeing is, I don't want to say Boeing is in a world of hurt right now. Boeing is struggling right now. Um, just too much bad news hitting the stock pretty consistently. A month ago, it was a $260 stock. Now it's a $213 stock. How brave are you? Do you want to buy a share saying, well, it was really doing quite well and building from lows in 2022 after the pandemic to 130 bucks all the way up to 260. So it doubled and it was on this nice move. And then a door on a plane blows off and the heat is on. How comfortable are you that there's no other problems? I'm by it. That's again, that's an area that I can't go into because there's no way to analyze that. You can find me online at Rob Black Show, Twitter Rob Black Show, YouTube Rob Black Show. I'm Rob Black. Um, February 15th, big event coming up um, just right around the corner. The Seven Steps for Retirement Readiness with CFP Chad Burton. You can sign up for the event at robblackshow.com. It's at the Stanford Park Hotel in Menlo Park. We go over taxes, income, long term care, safe money, investing, life goals, health, and wellness. Sign up at robblackshow.com. For more information about EP Wealth, visit robblack.com. That's robblack.com. Thanks for listening to the show. I am Rob Black, talking all things financial money, investing, and more. Show dedicated to getting you to retirement. I want you to kind of flip the script here a little bit on yourself and start enjoying life a little bit. I'm not of the concern that many are that the $5 latte at Starbucks is going to kill you. I'm more worried that not getting your plane ticket six weeks in advance and getting it six days before you fly. That's the killer when you're paying $600 for a flight that was 250. When you're paying for a mortgage, um, you know, $3,000 a month and it's at a 7% rate and you could refinance it down to a five and a quarter percent rate, do it. Consider it at least. That's where you're gonna save the majority of your money. It's on the big things, not on the small things. Um, I talk about that on a lot of things that we talk about on this show. Would I ever splurge on first class airfare? No. Um, maybe, but probably not. It's the big things. So that's the thing that gets us into trouble. I'm not a big fan of Susie Orman because she focuses on the small things. Um, what's your small luxury? What's, uh, she'll fly on a private jet, but she won't eat out. So she'll get a $25,000 private charter jet, but she won't spend a hundred dollars on dinner. I cannot imagine eating home every single night. I would say one of my luxuries uh, in life is that probably two to three times a week I eat out. And could I cut that back if I had nothing saved? Absolutely. And maybe that's what the focus should be on is, is where, how do you get to where you're going? Now keep in mind, many years ago when I was eating out, it was at Ruby Tuesdays and Bennigan's. It was horrible in my 20s. So my tickets were a lot smaller. Um, everyone loves a good cup of coffee, right? A uh, $4 cup of coffee comes out to about $1,000 a year. But that's real money for sure. That's that's half of your savings for a IRA. You do that, throw the $2,000 a year into an IRA, a Roth IRA, some sort of saving vehicle, and you'll have $10,000 after five years. That's not small money to sneeze at because in seven more years, that's going to be uh, 20,000. In 14 years, that'll be 40,000. Like you're like, ooh. So the small stuff does add up. It does, but the bigger stuff hits you a lot harder. It's, I have a pool and it's probably the dumbest thing that I own. I would, I'll probably do a show sometime soon on the dumbest things that Rob Black owns. I, 
do it for my kids and make them happy. And post COVID, uh, they'd have pool parties and things like that. And they have a great childhood. They've you know, jumped in the swimming pool at night in the freezing month of October, um, 50 plus times for celebrating my birthday. These are great moments. But that pool filter, everything about the pool, the heater, costs a lot of money. So I want you to think about who's giving you advice. Is it, you know, the $30,000 vacation to Europe this summer that you're putting on credit? Or is it the cup of coffee that's four bucks? Um, you got to start thinking different ways of being an investor and saving money. Look for the big things, not the small things. Uh, unemployment is low in the United States. Gas prices have come down. The housing market is declining. But prices on homes are still very elevated. There's a wealth effect from the housing market and the stock market. When the market hits record highs two days in a row with the SP 500, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, people feel richer. They feel more optimism. Right now, there is a move away from pessimism on our economy hitting a uh, recession and move towards optimism on it hitting a soft landing. You're going to hear more and more people talk about optimistic periods of time. The late 1990s, the 1920s, in the late 1920s. In the 1920s, there were dishwashers and washing machines. It was a fantastic time-saving inventions. In the 1990s, you got the internet. Now you're getting artificial intelligence. You're going to hear a lot of optimism. Are there similarities that we should be concerned with? I don't want you being too optimistic. Um, I want you to be Warren Buffett. Be greedy when others are fearful and be fearful when others are greedy. Do I want you to change your life? Nope. Um, Berkshire Hathaway is Warren Buffett's investment vehicle. It's a slow and boring kind of company. And he owns a huge position in Apple. Apple is a slow and boring kind of company right now. Apple just released their new Apple Vision Pro, which is their step into a virtual reality. It did well. It did well. It's not something that I'm going to um, scream about how well it did because you're talking about relatively small number of units. Um, and I think that has to be thrown down as like, oh, I get that. So 65,000, how many units was it? Uh, give me just a second. I think I have it. Uh, 100, here it is. They sold 160,000 Apple Vision Pros and basically got the first batch sold out. Now, demand could cool going forward as a diehard techie snap up the first batch. We'll see where it goes from here. I am fascinated by how shopping oriented our culture is. The pink Stanley Cups were the rage last month. Now it's floor mirrors from Costco and Anthropology. Costco's luxury floor mirror. And I, I had to take a look at what exactly is a floor mirror because I wasn't quite sure. I thought I had an idea, but it is kind of what it sounds like, a mirror that sits on the floor. Um, Costco's cost 150 bucks. Anthropology's cost $1,200. If you can't tell the difference, that's the difference between a big purchase and a small one. Focus on the big purchases, more so on the small ones. Um, again, am I going to win you over with that kind of boring approach? Probably not. But that's where I'm sitting at today as we reflect going forward. Cooling off, but not cold. That's what I'd like to see happen with earnings this uh, season. NVIDIA has been red hot. NVIDIA is up 20% this month alone. And it stumbled out of the gate. It was down 5% in the first two trading sessions of the year. So for it to be up 20.5% tells you it's, it's a mover and a shaker. Today we got losers out of 3M, Lockheed Martin, General Electric, and DR Horton. Man, Lockheed Martin's CEO was on one of the talk shows this morning. And he was talking about this technology that they're developing that goes on the back of a truck, like on a pickup truck. And basically, it's a really small missile that goes and attacks drones with, I want to say, uh, pulses of, of energy that knocks the drones out of the sky. 
And he goes, yeah, we only got like 20 of them right now, but we'll get to 40 and we'd like to get to 100. Um, but that's wild stuff. When you're talking about investing in weapons that kill people or like, I don't know how you feel about that one. I know cigarettes kill people. I know McDonald's gets people diabetic, right? But how do you feel about weapons? Uh, Sturm Ruger. Uh, you can invest in companies that make weapons. No economic data of note today. Economic calendar will steal some of the spotlight later in the week. Fourth quarter GDP advance report is out Thursday. December personal income and spending report, which is out Friday. That's the Federal Reserve's preferred inflation gauge. If it shows a hike in inflation, expect the markets to uh, fizzle out. If it shows inflation getting under control, expect the markets to say, okay, maybe the Fed will cut in March. I mean, no one thinks they're going to cut in March. Uh, but the kind of, if inflation fizzles out, right? China's considering a nearly $280 billion stock market stabilization package. I saw the two insiders at Alibaba bought millions of dollars of shares to show confidence. And then I see that China is asking their country to show confidence because as a government, they're going to throw $280 billion into stabilizing their, their, their stock market. I hate stories like that. I, I hate when the government intervenes saving companies like car companies or saving airlines. I understand the importance of saving banks and airlines and, and car companies. I do. They have a lot of jobs. But our government right now has put a lot of pressure on banks, midsize, a couple of small ones, mostly the large ones, to have more cash on hand so that, that the government doesn't have to come saving them. One. And the big banks are like, that's so unfair in Europe. They don't have to have this much cash on hand. And you're like, as long as we never have to bail you out again, deal or no deal. And we'll see where that resolution goes on Congress. Um, how, resol how resolved will they be in forcing the banks to have more cash so they don't have to be bailed out in the future? Shouldn't we have car companies do the same? Shouldn't we have airlines do the same? 30. A lot of people question, like, why are airlines buying back their shares, helping the shareholders, when the average American had to help bail out the airlines and the car companies and the banks? You can always find me online at Rob Black Show, Twitter Rob Black Show, YouTube Rob Black Show. I'm the aforementioned Rob Black. Big event coming up in Stanford Park in Menlo, uh, Stanford Park Hotel in Menlo Park, California. You can sign up for the event at robblackshow.com. That's robblackshow.com. You are listening to the Rob Black Show podcast. For more information on EP Wealth, visit robblack.com. That's robblack.com. Thanks for listening to the show. Do me a favor and spread it around. I try to bring an approach that's unique. Um, I would refer to it as honest and Generation X approach. Um, hopefully you see that. Hopefully you understand that. Let's take a look at some of the stories of the day. Um, you know, I was looking at a company called Liquid Death. Do you know Liquid Death? They um, got tall boy cans of water. And I, I, I'm often shocked at how much we'll pay for water. And often shocked at just the business of water. 100,000 fans on Facebook is kind of the story that what you need to know is within a couple months, they had 100,000 fans. They have a very graphic designer approach to their marketing of the cans of, of water. Cans for brands, I guess, is what you'd say about it. Company's valuation is gone higher. Um, and they, they just do a lot of fun things. Like uh, they make tea called Dead Billionaire and, you know, Dead Water. Like, I, you tell me what you think about that. Expedia stock has been dipping recently while the market gains. And I think that's tied towards people thinking that there's going to be a weakening of travel. And I think it's going to be opposite. So whether you're TripAdvisor, Bookings.com, Marriott International, Expedia, Wynn Resorts, Hilton Hotels, Airbnb, Royal Caribbean Cruises, Trip.com, they're all, that's the whole, that's all that I can think about, of which I own Airbnb. 
Um, for the long term, it's probably my craziest stock that I own. But I, again, I think that kids today, and and I see this in Generation Z uh, and the millennials, of like, we're doing our best to save money and it's not really paying off. We're not getting into that house. We're not creating wealth like Generation X and the baby boomers did. Millennials are doing okay, but not as well as Generation X and the baby boomers. So when the markets underperform or a stock underperforms while the market's going higher, it always gets my attention. Am I telling you to buy it? No, I am not. And you have to start with a thesis, and it's a big one where you're like, I think kids are going to travel. And then you have to expand it. Um, Today, I see the markets getting weaker as the day goes on. We've had a big rally for the last three to four weeks. Uh, Markets up, you know, 10 out of 11 weeks. That's too much. Um, In my opinion. I'm seeing the Russell. Everything's down except the NASDAQ. And the NASDAQ's barely higher today. But Dow's down one half percent. The S&P 500's down just fractions. Because the S&P 500, let's face it, it's the mega six. A lot of people want to kick Tesla out of the mega seven. I think that's a little bit on the silly side, but uh, it's an old company now. Tesla's not the young rock and bunk that they used to be. They are going to report numbers this week. Um, I just think that the cyber truck is a bit of a mess. I think they're having some problems selling vehicles in Asia and Europe, so they're cutting prices, which they still are the most profitable car company out there as far as margins go. You can cut costs and still be profitable. I'm seeing NVIDIA down a point today, Microsoft down less than a point. Those are the two AI plays, but I see Amazon and Visa and uh, who else do I see down today? Uber's down, Pinterest is down. Google is up a little bit, Qualcomm down a little bit, Apple up a little bit. Interesting note, Expedia, the travel one that's been down recently while the market's up, they're up today. So I want you to be really careful with what you learned, but also I want you to be really careful with what you don't know. I think from age 20 to about 60, you should be wealth accumulating. And then from age 60 to 100, you should be wealth managing. If everything worked out well for you. For decades, the 4% rule has served as guidelines for retirees of when you're retired, you can take 4% out. It's really complicated being retired. You've got dividends, you've got social security, you've got capital gains taxes, you've got income taxes. But they all play together. And from age 60 to 100, you no longer have that ability to work. Well, you do maybe, but got to be careful on that one, right? Because a lot of people get to 60 and find age discrimination has taken over in the workplace. Taking a look today at the big story thesis of the markets, there's digesting going on. Modest profit taking after the Dow Jones Industrial Average and the SP 500 hit fresh all time highs. There's an increase in market rates. Uh, we're still waiting for more earnings this week from big companies. Some of them include Tesla and Netflix. Netflix made a big splash this morning. Tomorrow we're going to get AT and T, IBM, Ethan Allen, Progressive Insurance, Sally Mae, and Tesla. Tonight we get Netflix. Thursday we get Alaska Air, Capital One. Ooh, what's Capital One going to tell us? The health of the people borrowing on credit cards. What's Visa going to tell us? How much are people spending? What areas are they spending it in? This is one of my favorite weeks of earnings because it it precedes the big tech earnings next week. But it gets to view a lot of data. Again, not today, later in the week. You can find me online at Rob Black Show, Twitter Rob Black Show, YouTube Rob Black Show. Samsung is racing with Apple to develop a blood sugar monitor watch. Got a big event coming up. In February, if you're in that wealth management area, it's an event for you. You can learn more. It's going to be in Menlo Park. It's going to be tied towards seven retirement readiness test steps. 
February 15th, Menlo Park, Stanford Park Hotel, Thursday, 15th of February, 6.30 to 8.30. Sign up at robblackshow.com. Visit the Rob Black Show online at robblackshow.com. Listen to archived podcasts, market updates, and information from EP Wealth's certified financial planners online at robblackshow.com.